All right, uh, just like that title says, this is a uh, Star Wars Battlefront versus uh, Battlefield 4, in uh, my opinion. So it's basically just going to be a free flow of consciousness and my thoughts on the games. Uh, my plan is to talk about uh, things like the the premium versus uh, season pass, land ve vehicles, air vehicles, leveling up, map size, overall experience, and anything else that uh, comes to mind as I uh, watch back through this footage that I edited. Okay, so obviously right now we're seeing Star Wars, uh, and this is one of the newer maps. I recorded uh, a lot of this footage shortly after the release of the first expansion, and uh, now it's uh, June 2016, and I'm just getting around to uh, to uh, finishing it up with, with the audio on this. One of my main gripes with the Star Wars is uh, I, I paid for the expansion, uh, the, which in this case is the uh, season pass, everything up front, and uh, here we are in June, and they've only, at least the, the, when I recorded this, and I didn't bother to check before I uh, recorded this audio, but when I recorded this, they still hadn't released the second expansion. The game came out in November of 2015, so look at over you know six months until we get an expansion. I think that's a bit long to, to wait for the amount of money you pay for that. If you're going to have people pay up front for expansions, that should all be... Uh, it should all be released a lot sooner. So that's one of my gripes with Star Wars. It's not really going to be a gripe fest with this this video, but that is kind of a gripe. Um, I I will definitely with Battlefield One. I'm definitely going to be getting the premium package because I know I'm going to play that game a lot. But I I really hope that they don't do that again. So one thing though on the good side with the with Star Wars compared to like Battlefield, you you're not going to get the same kind of experience in Battlefield that you get when you get a hero. You get a hero if you have a good run, like I just had with this. It goes a long time, and it's a lot of fun. Um, it that kind of same experience doesn't always happen in uh, battle battlefield or yes, yeah, so battlefield. So this is footage here from battlefield. One of the things I like about battlefield is the map sizes. Star Wars doesn't have quite the same overall scope of map sizes. Uh, they don't feel as epically big as sometimes they can feel in the battlefield series. On the other hand, the locations for some of the Star Wars uh, levels have really good epic feels. And I'll, I'll talk to probably a lot more over the course of the video about vehicles, but I was really disappointed in vehicles in Star Wars. Uh, I, I had really high expectations, and I probably should have done a little more homework, but in Battlefield you can jump in and out of vehicles. Uh, obviously you can't jump back into a plane unless you've got some kind of crazy setup of skills, but you can get in and out of out of uh, out of vehicles on the battlefield, and in Star Wars, when you get out of a vehicle, it, it respawns you onto the map. So it's not the same experience. Pros and cons to that: you don't get snipers getting into a vehicle and jumping out of a, out of a plane way up in the air and parachuting down into some crazy spot, and uh, that happens a lot in Battlefield. Doesn't happen so much in this game, but the planes in particular. Um, that they they don't fly the same way as like a, a normal jet would in in a battlefield, which is fine because I mean, it's Star Wars, so it's okay. But I kind of wish that uh, they weren't so oriented towards maintaining a level of the ground. So you can't really spin the vehicle over upside down, or spin it sideways and, and pull up on the yoke and and uh, and make it uh, turn, make us do a super hard turn the same way. I got used to them eventually, and uh, at first they were really unbalanced. They got balanced better as time went by, but. That's one, one aspect of vehicles, and I was really disappointed again back in You can't, like, steal a walker. I thought it would be awesome to get into a Rebel AT-ST and, and just, or as a Rebel, get into an AT-ST and, and steal it. So here we go back into, into air, airplanes. As we're flying around, you'll see the, the ground, will, as I turn, I'll turn the vehicle sideways and then just pull up really hard to, uh, to spin the vehicle around. Like, so right here, I'll do that, do a hard turn, come back around. And I have complete control. I can flip the vehicle upside down if I wanted to, like I do right there. You cannot do these kind of maneuvers in Star Wars. So I was really looking forward to that kind of maneuvering with jets, and it's not in the game, which uh, I'm a little disappointed in. But yeah, again, different universe, Star Wars versus Battlefield. So it's not the end of the world. But it would have been nice to have the same level of control. Another thing, too, uh, there's no hardcore mode in uh, Star Wars that I'm aware of. Um, it's definitely a more casual game. Uh, a lot of times, and probably in a lot of the footage I'll have on here, 
is, is you'll see that there's no HUD and uh, that's when you're playing hardcore so one shot kills are a lot more common you don't uh, there's a lot less survivability so right here is an example to a vehicle it's like I jump out at the last second because I was getting hit I was gonna crash and now I'm on the battlefield and I'm, I'm running and gunning I didn't respawn I just I just ejected from the vehicle. That does not happen in Star Wars. You don't just eject from a vehicle. You have to hold, uh, I think it's a square button down, I forget right now, but you hold the, one of the buttons down. This is all PS4 oriented. Um, and uh, ooh, hence the, the square, not uh, not the exit kind of, you know, button, whatever. Um, so you can't just jump out of a uh, out of a, a, a vehicle so the exception would be the speeders i think there's a couple of speeders the uh the, the speeder bikes you can do that in um the gadgetry is a lot less gadgetry in star wars um but that's actually not a bad thing because there's actually too much gadgetry and too much uh um level uh leveling in uh the battlefield experience there's a there's a lot a uh, lot less of that going on in uh, star wars which is good i think that I played the game consistently for uh, for a couple of months, and I managed to get up to level 50. And I played Battlefield for two and a half years straight, and I have not prestiged once. Now I'm not hardcore gamer all the time playing, so that doesn't help my help my uh, you know abilities, and it doesn't help me uh, level up faster. But at least in Star Wars, it didn't take forever to level up, and weapons don't have to level up. So if you wanna level up a weapon in uh in in battlefield you have to first you gotta level up to the level where you can use the weapon and then that weapon itself you gotta level up the weapon individually before you can actually use that weapon as you know as you'd like to which is really actually pretty annoying so here's an example of what i'm talking about with leveling these are all things you'd have to level up to unlock thankfully they have these battle packs as you play through the game that you get free unlocks but as I go through the menu here there's the four different classes and you can got weapons you can cycle through or vehicles you can cycle through if you're using a vehicle you have to unlock each of these individual weapons they start off with like maybe a missile and a machine gun and you got to start unlocking things um, because there's not as many vehicles as there are hand weapons vehicles don't tend to be as annoying on that that front but it is something that consider with the with star wars you just get in and you start playing it which is nice now you go into the weapon selection menu for the different classes and i think in this section here i start cycling through the different uh, different weapons so there's a weapon i dial down into the different weapons for that that i can use and you got different classes of weapons now you're in a weapon you got all these different attachments you can put in each of those attachments has to be unlocked individually for that weapon. When you play, really when you play this game, you really shouldn't have to unlock every one of these wet th these things individually. So if you're playing a shotgun, which we're looking at a shotgun right here, if you unlock the stubby grip or you unlock one of the sights, it should be unlocked for all the shotguns, not that just that shotgun. So I'm really glad Star Wars doesn't have this, and I hope they fix that in future Battlefield games because it's super annoying. And look at all the different camouflages. Now, those are a lot less critical, but if you get used to using a specific scope and some, and whatnot, but you're not sure you want to use this gun, you got to spend forever leveling that gun up to the point where it has the gadgets that you like on it. And if you find out you don't like it once you get those gadgets, now you've just wasted a whole bunch of gameplay time getting to that level. They really should just make each class of weapon, pistols, machine guns, sniper rifles, once you unlock it, it's unlocked for every one of those weapons in that class. And then you got a ton of different grenades you can unlock, a ton of different knives you can unlock, um, and different different uh, abilities. Tons and tons of customization. It just, it, my complaint is it takes too long to unlock all of the things. I, you know, I played this game for two years straight before I started playing Star Wars. It's pretty much one of the only games I played, and I didn't have anything unlocked, or everything unlocked. So those of you who want to hate on my skills, you can hate on my skills now. <laughs> I know it really shouldn't take somebody that long to unlock all that stuff. Granted, I have a real job and a real life, so I don't spend forever playing the game. So that's my retort. Continuing on, now you go over here into the Star Wars menu. It's actually much cleaner. There's the expansion packs, which again, this was this was actually 
the maps I think were released, but the expansion pack itself wasn't actually released for at the time that I recorded this. And this was that was I think three or four months in. I mean, it was ridiculously long before they finally got around to releasing the uh, the first expansion pack. It should not take that long. So granted, the game's simpler to, to play the Star Wars game. It's a little easier to get the hang of. It's definitely more casual. A lot. It's a lot less leveling crap. But okay, good. Now start giving us more more stuff to work with. Obviously, you're not working on balancing all the leveling stuff. Let us play the game. Also, melees. Oh my gosh, melees in Battlefield are way better than melees in Star Wars. I feel like the the chance to hit people is weird. It doesn't really the the hit contact isn't right. The melee in 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 Battlefield Four in particular has some issues because you, know, you go to set up on somebody to melee them, and uh, it's basically first one to to start the process usually gets it. There's a there's a counter attack maneuver, but it's it I think they dialed it back because it used to be really easy to do counter. And Star Wars, again, not as technical a game. You look in this scope that I'm using on this, I've gadgeted it up. On the right-hand side of the thing, you'll see that the uh, range is reading uh, to where my crosshairs are. And on the left-hand side, I've got the zeroing in. I can change how the gun is zeroed in. So right now, I'm looking for a target. You can't do this kind of thing in Star Wars, uh, which, uh, pros and cons. I just I like the, the technical aspects of, of the Battlefield game. So I think eventually here I find a sniper way up on a ridge. Oh, here's another gadgetry thing. You can launch uh, drones as a sniper that have uh, essentially in infrared vision. Uh, in this case, I think thermal. And uh, so you start flying your drone around. You can kind of get a feel for what's going on around you in the battlefield if you got a pretty good hiding hole. I tend to when I when I was recording this, I was actually working on upgrading my my or upping my sniper's uh, skill tree which uh, I don't actually play very often, so uh, I tended to hide my guy somewhere in the middle of the map um, because so many people hide up on the high ground, so I'm actually driving the drone around trying to find some people on high ground right now. I think I found somebody way up on the ridge and uh, ended up uh, ended up having, a, I think, a really good, <laughs> good hit on him, but you can't do this kind of thing in Star Wars. It's definitely a more fast-paced game. So I think right there I located the guy and kind of roughly knew where he was because I played this map, but nice. I just I always liked this particular footage. Just pop in and uh, look for the guy. And the snipers in, in uh, Battlefield versus uh, right there. You see I'm zeroing in on the left-hand side, two, three, four, five hundred. Got a feel for it. And cha-ching. <laughs> Game over. Uh, so... You can't do that kind of technical stuff in Star Wars. It's definitely a direct line of sight. I don't think there's any bullet fall. So it's all about getting your getting your timing just right. Whereas there's definitely some slower movement type stuff that happens in uh, in Battlefield when it comes to you know those kind of little encounters. You know, one of the biggest contrasts between Battlefield and Star Wars Battlefront, I think, is the uh, is the general pacing. I don't know, to equate it back to like 1990s terms, it's more like Quake uh, Star Wars, where you're just doing this team deathmatch. And of course, there you know there's game modes where you're playing, and uh, it's not necessarily deathmatch. It's more, it's more oriented around objectives. But Battlefield is definitely, a, it, as long as I always play Conquest or Rush, it's always much more of a, a, a team-based, uh, Although teams don't really happen as much in Battlefield as I think they should, but it's a, definitely more, definitely more of a team-based oriented, objective-based game. Star Wars definitely tends to feel more. Although the, there are objectives and the teams win, it's not nearly as much as as you get in Battlefield. I'm gonna go back to talking about footage of of the vehicles because as I watch this jet, I'm just reminded how much more I like vehicles in Battlefield versus Battlefront. If they make a Star Wars Battlefront 2, I really hope that they take the vehicles and treat them more like they do in Battlefield because it's just more fun to be able to go in and out of vehicles ad hoc. I mean, just imagine you start at the base for one of the, uh, the Empire 
and you got an AT walker, ATST walker, whatever it is. You're running around, you gotta jump out of it. Now, a rebel soldier gets it and runs and guns with it. That's, you know, that's that's Return of the Jedi right there. Chewbacca taking the, uh, the walker. That's not what the game actually plays like. It, it definitely, it would be beneficial to be able to get into vehicles and steal them. I think that's my biggest complaint with Star Wars. That said, I mean, Star Wars is still, it's a, t it's a ton of fun to play. It's just, in my opinion, not as much fun as Battlefield. Um, I can't get over that. As much as I love Star Wars, I just, I, I, I have more fun playing Battlefield than I do playing Star Wars. But again, looking at the airplanes here, it'd be nice in a, in a TIE fighter to be able to just turn and make those kind of sharp turns like I'm making in this jet where I turn the whole world sideways and just pull up on the yoke and it just spins the vehicle around and uh, make striking runs that way. It just, it that that I think is something that Star Wars is lacking. The vehicles are great, but they could be that much better if they were just a l tweaked a little bit. I mean, imagine Star Wars physics. Imagine this footage you're seeing as an X-Wing. How crazy would it be to be able to take, because this vehicle that I'm flying right now is about as maneuverable as the X-Wing, but to be able to slow down as slow as an X-Wing will go and then speed it up real fast again, that would be really cool to be able to do in Star Wars. And that experience is lacking. The on-foot experience is actually pretty fun. I have more fun, I think, playing on-foot in Star Wars than I do in Battlefield. Uh, that's definitely the vehicles and the, maybe the character classes. There's different classes of uh, characters. It's uh, not so much based on the loadout as much as it is about the character class. I think those those two changes, if they could incorporate that into Star Wars, I think it'd be a perfect game. Now I have dogged a little bit on the maps for, uh, for Star Wars, but I will say that the maps in Star Wars tactically are a little balanced they're balanced better than they are in battlefield battlefield 4 had really bad balancing and and watching a lot of youtube videos from other other guys that do videos that uh, do it much better than i do uh there's a lot of conversation that those guys have about how the maps in battlefield 3 for example were designed by by game player uh programmers and in battlefield 4 they were designed by visual programmers and I do think the maps look visually better in Battlefield 4, but having compared those to how the maps in Battlefield 3 play, it's an entirely different game. So I would agree with that assessment, and Star Wars definitely improved on that. I feel like the, the Star Wars maps, tactically playing, were balanced better. There's still some weak points, but it's, it's definitely balanced better, I think. Now, as much as I'm kind of dogging on Star Wars, the emotional experience of playing the game with a franchise that you, you know, in my case, I'm in my mid-30s. It's just something I grew up with. It's so cool to be able to play that game and have the experiences of playing as Vader or as, uh, you know, just running through maps and that getting the expanded experience of playing through maps that you, you know instinctively, you know, we all know Hoth from watching The Empire you know the Empire Strikes Back, and to be able to play the game and and live it out in the it, from the you know the view of all the guys down there firing on the uh, the walkers as they come in, that's a pretty cool experience. Uh, speaking of Vader, a moment ago here we got Vader footage. Heroes in Star Wars are kind of a weird thing. In order to properly use them, you got to spend a lot of time playing as a hero because each one of the heroes controls differently uh luke is fast and quick and vader's a little bit slow but he's got he's he's pretty powerful and you know his he's he's i think he's pretty well balanced he's not as balanced he's not as crazy awesome as, as luke is but and there are you know a couple of the, the newer characters that have come out with the first expansion they're I, they're pretty well pretty awesome um although guido's kind of i haven't figured him out yet but the heroes, you got to spend a lot of time playing with them, and you don't get as much in-time game playing with them. So when you get them, and it's random how you get them because you got to collect the coins, essentially the, the hero coin, it, it can sometimes be uh, short-lived because you don't really know how to use them. So 
I do think as much as the heroes are awesome, somebody who's had a lot of time to and trained up on a hero can have a pretty effective run with one of the heroes, whereas most people just get them and they burn through them really quick. Um, that's kind of my overall take on the heroes. It's still an awesome experience, but I, I think that uh, aside from playing the, the, the hero matches, which are don't, I don't think you get the proper experience playing the heroes because you're playing hero on hero. You're not really playing against players like this is uh one of the uh the maps where it's like conquest similar or similar to conquest type map but he, he, there should be like a training single player mission which is something also i should mention is there's no st single player in star wars oh luke totally didn't see that coming but yeah the single player i actually enjoy the single player in battle in battlefield um although i don't, don't go back and replay it very often I really look forward to the single player whenever new, a new one comes out. And for that matter, not that I play a whole lot of COD, but the COD single player, I always look forward to that. And I finish it, and I don't replay it. Really as you know, For example, I'll replay Uncharted uh, a couple of times. But Star Wars didn't have a single player. I was actually pretty disappointed in that. I knew before I bought it that that wasn't the case. It did not, it, that I knew it didn't have single player. but. It would have been nice to have a single player campaign, although it probably, I could see how it would probably have been dogged on quite a bit because not, you're always going to have critics. They're going to have issues with what you get out of a single player campaign for such a, uh, a franchise that everybody knows. And I just really dig, this is one of my favorites, the infrared on a uh, uh, DMR, designated marksman rifle. Um, I just really dig being able to use that uh, combination. It doesn't scope in very well, but guys that like to hide out a lot, I like I like sniping snipers. It's kind of one of my favorite things. Guys that like to hide a lot, it just be it's just fun to be able to to hunt those guys down because they uh, they're, they're not used to it. They're used to be able to hunt other people down. They're not so good at hunting people down that are hunting them. So once I realize guys are camped in, I'll go and I'll hunt them out. And that's kind of one of my fun fun things to do. Which in Battlefront for Star Wars, I don't feel like there was really good opportunities to be able to do that. So here's another bit about the overall experience. And I know I harp on this a lot in this video, but I start here in a jet. Um, planning on using a bombing run. I took an attack jet. Then I notice a helicopter, so I go for an attack run on this helicopter. Not a smart move with a jet because I'm using cannons. You, you can take them out, but to really commit, especially in this particular map with that large dam wall right there, it's just difficult. But eventually in this this uh, video, I, I think in this clip, I eject out of the jet and I end up doing some ground combat. That is, is a huge deal, and I know I harp on that a lot, but it's missing from Star Wars. And the same game engine, it would have been so nice to be able to get just in and out of vehicles. You, it, it, That's my biggest, got to be my biggest gripe in Star Wars. I actually still love playing Star Wars, but it's just, it's just really, it really bites that you cannot jump in and out of vehicles. So right now I'm, I was engaged by a, uh, another jet. I knew I couldn't win the fight because it was just, he had the, the drop on me. So I ejected out of the jet. I like playing engineering class. It's probably my favorite class in playing uh, Battlefield. So I usually plant mines and spots where I know guys tend to take vehicles a lot. And that spot is a spot on the map where guys tend to, uh, to park uh, uh, amphibious vehicles and uh, fire on one of the other bases. Um, Oh, I just realized this footage right here. I've already used this footage in this video. But uh, melee kills never get old. They're all the better when it's a sniper who's been taking people out from some crazy spot. And you come in and you melee them. Love that. But here we are. So I'm running around. I was flying a jet for the first part of this clip. Now I'm on the ground. How awesome would that be in Star Wars? Cannot say that enough. It would be so incredible to be able to just get, jump in and out of vehicles. Um, granted, they don't really have parachutes anywhere in the Star Wars world, so I don't know how they'd handle that. Here's another one of my favorite things. is uh, So there's 64 players, 32 on 32 on a typical game, and a air vehicle, although jets aren't quite as effective, I think, as some of the helicopters, an air vehicle is a pretty effective vehicle. It can cause a lot of damage to 
to uh, the ground map, and uh, particular helicopters have the ability to take uh, base points, but if you're using a lock-on weapon, you can basically make a vehicle ineffective. If you don't care about points, you're, you, you know, you, you're racking up points for, your, for yourself. You can make a vehicle ineffective by just locking onto it. They'll get worried about being shot out of the sky. They'll go fly away, and then they'll come back down and try to attack. By that time, your lock-on weapon's recharged. You don't actually have to fire a weapon. You just got to lock onto them. Okay, so here's another thing in Battlefield that I think is done better than Star Wars, which I didn't achieve in that particular clip that you just watched. But you can shoot guys out of vehicles in, battle, in uh, Battlefield. In Star Wars, I think you can only do that on speeder bikes. So it's possible with a really well-placed shot to take the pilot out of a helicopter. Or in that that guy, I just took him off of a, uh, a, a cannon emplacement. But you, can, you can't do that in Star Wars. And I really that would be pretty killer if you could take guys out from just launching a uh, you know sniper attack on a, uh, a jet. How crazy would that be? Oh well, minor. That's a pretty minor grave. Uh, in general, as you can tell, still a big Battlefield f fan. And as much as I love Star Wars, I think there's so many things they could have added to this game that would have uh, added to it. Suppression fire. Uh, these guys, are fi as I'm firing on them they their sc their screen goes blurry um star wars that doesn't happen it actually doesn't bug me that much that it doesn't happen in star wars although i think it would be cool um and add to the experience but i get it's you know it's star wars different world it's sci it's well, not sci-fi because it's not really sci-fi but it's uh space opera space fantasy and so it's a different world and and as much as i dog on the, the game i do really truly enjoy playing it it's just there's so many things that I think could be in there that are not there that you could very easily have. So coming up here, I kind of made a fatal mistake. I threw a uh, grenade underneath this vehicle. Then one of the one of the mines I had blew up a vehicle, and I thought it blew up the vehicle in front of me. Well, no, the guy was still manning the machine gun. That vehicle was very much intact. Mistakes were made, lessons were learned, oh well. Moving on. So as I approach the end of this video, in summary, the weaknesses with Battlefield are definitely how long it takes to level, leveling in general, and uh, the weaknesses in Star Wars are the vehicles compared to what they could have been. Both games are a lot of fun to play. My my pick is, as I said, it's always going to be Battlefield. Um, will I buy Star Wars again? Yes. Will I buy Star Wars in a premium or a season pass? Probably not, if they make another one. Will I buy Battlefield with the season pass or what they uh, what they call premium? Definitely going forward. Um, the the season pass is definitely a better package when it comes to Battlefield. So those are my thoughts. Not yours, and they're worth exactly what you paid for.